In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared, 
Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steep. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich? in faith, in heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself, away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello. It's very good to see you all. You know, it's an easy thing to say. It's good to see you. But that's because for most of us, we take it for granted that we can see. We have all of our senses. But today in the gospel, someone who did not have their senses, who was deaf and mute, they're cured and they're given their senses. What would we do in that case? Would we go back to our home and hide and not tell anybody about it? No, there's no way. We would want everybody to know that someone has healed us and that someone is Jesus. And so it's not an argument about God that we need or an explanation of the faith. That's happening all the time. But what people actually need is our own personal testimony about how Jesus has cured us, opened our ears, opened our mouth to hear his word and proclaim his good news. And that's what today is all about. So here are a few questions that might uh, bring that encounter in your life back to mind. Just listen to them and see what comes up in your heart. Do you remember what was your life like before you met Jesus? Do you remember when you met him, when he first touched your life? Did he open your eyes, your mouth, or your ears in some way? How has your life changed? Are you different? And finally, how are you inviting people to share in our life with Jesus here? And that's the key. Because when we give our testimony about Jesus or invite people to meet him, we become the instruments of healing in Jesus' hand by giving voice to the voiceless. We open our ears to the word of God and the Holy Spirit loosens our tongues to speak the good news of God's love and salvation to others. But how much can one little voice do, our own little voice? You may doubt yourself that that your voice can't do anything, that it can't move hearts. Well, listen to the following example about what one voice did do when it spoke of Jesus in in the face of great adversity and injustice. In the fifth century, there was a little monk named Telemachus, and he heard the voice of God telling him to go to Rome. He went to Rome to confront what was happening in the Colosseum, the gladiator fights. Now, despite any movie you would have seen, the gladiator fights were nothing to celebrate. They were not glorious. They were not heroic. They were actually slaves and prisoners of war and convicted criminals being forced to kill each other for a perverse entertainment. And there's nothing good about that. Well, this little monk, Telemachus, went up. He followed the crowd into the Colosseum. And as the gladiators were fighting, he jumped down into the arena and he shouted, in the name of Christ, hold back. Well, the gladiators stopped fighting, but the crowd in their bloodlust became indignant. 
And they leapt into the, to the stage, and they stoned him and beat him to death. Well, when they saw the little monk lying dead in his own pool of blood, they fell silent and they left the stadium one by one. And it was that very incident that caused the Emperor Honorius to decree a ban to the games January 1st in the year 404. So his one little voice speaking the name of Christ did put an end to 760 years of slaughter. The, the gladiator fights were not originally a battle in an arena, they were part of a funeral ceremony. The early Romans believed that an offering of blood would purify their dead ones who had just died. And so the more noble classes had people fight against each other to either go as protectors in the next life or as kind of a substitute for human sacrifice, which they couldn't do directly. So the sacrifice of blood, human sacrifice, was directly tied into the gladiator fights. And we know that wherever the gospel is proclaimed, wherever the sacrifice of Jesus is proclaimed, that it brings an end to not only human sacrifice, but animal sacrifice. Because Jesus is the one true sacrifice and there's no need for any more. It took another 120 years for the Roman society to stop animal sacrifices, but they did that as well. Well, in today's gospel, we, just, we hear the miraculous healing of the deaf mute how exactly did Jesus do that? You know, a physical ailment at that time was considered some type of curse or a sin. And they would say, why was this person born deaf or mute? It was because they sinned or because their parents sinned. Now, we know that isn't true. Jesus tells us that very specifically. He says, it was not because of a sin that they are this way. It was so that I could show you my power by healing them. And he first, he leads the man away from the crowd and then he touches his ear. And then he does something kind of strange to us. He puts spittle, he spits, and he puts it on the deaf mute's tongue. And he sighs, looking up to heaven, and he utters the word of power, epatha. Epatha means be opened, open up. Now, you may remember if you've been to a baptism recently that we actually still use that word. Do you know when it is in the baptism, anyone? Remember? It's when the priest or deacon blesses the ear and the mouth so that we can hear the word of God and that we can speak the word of God. And that still happens today. So we still have that word of healing that Jesus gave us. The most important thing is that when we speak about Jesus or invite people to him, we may feel a lack of confidence. You know, how can I do this? Can I make any difference? Yes, you can, because... All we do is invite, but it's the Holy Spirit who moves the hearts. The Holy Spirit does the heavy lifting. We send out the invitation, and God completes the work. But God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. Once we say yes, he gives us the gifts we need to do the work. But if we wait until we're perfectly ready, we'll never begin. Our confidence is not in ourselves or in another person sharing the good news, but our confidence is in the good news himself, Jesus Christ, because he is the good news. That's all we're preaching about. That's all we're saying. Do not be afraid for the Holy Spirit will complete the work you begin with power and love that cannot be resisted. So finally, our challenge today is like the brave little monk, Telemachus, to know when to say, in the name of Christ, hold back when we see injustice and also to know when to bring others to Jesus through a personal testimony of the good things he has done for us so that they too may proclaim with their mouth the most holy name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. And now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in the accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Confident in God who brings streams to the desert and springs of water to dry ground, we give voice to our needs and the needs of the world. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be a consistent witness to our faith, leading others to realize God's grace through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation's leaders, that they may look with favor upon the neglected and the needy and work to enact policies that can transform their lives. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, on Labor Day, that our work may be directed to God's glory and that the unemployed will obtain suitable work. Let us pray to the Lord. For all whose lives were forever changed 20 years ago on September the 11th, 2001, and for the thousands of victims who died in the attacks that they may be at peace, comforted at the heart of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all of us gathered here this morning, that we may welcome the stranger and the outsider without partiality, without judgment, without reservations. Let us pray to the Lord. God of all mercy, you bring hope to those without hope, love to those without love, and life to those without life. Look with favor on your children and fulfill our most precious needs with the hope, love, and life that only you can bring through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Lord. 
I am not worthy that she should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your Son's beloved gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please, please be seated for the announcements. Good morning. Good morning. This year's Catholic Charities Annual Appeal focuses on how we are all connected. Rich and poor have a common bond. The Lord is the maker of them all from Psalm 22. Help connect and care for those in need by donating to Catholic Charities Annual Appeal um, at give to cc.org or filling out the envelope in the pew. The first parent meeting for the Family Faith Formation will be this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. in the gym. Please arrive at 6 p.m. to pick up the books. And the parish office will be closed tomorrow for the Labor Day holiday. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace glorifying the Lord from your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.